Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Sebastian. This is Sharp Programming and today we're going to be talking about objects, classes and methods. Before we get into it today, just a quick word from the sponsor, PVS Studio. If you're looking for a static code analysis software, look no further. PVS Studio is a free piece of software that helps you find bugs in your code. PVS Studios can perform a wide range of checks on your code and can even find copy paste errors. Like they say, there is no reason wasting 50 hours looking for a bug that could be found using static code analysis. So let me point that out again. The main idea of static code analysis is not to find the hidden bug on the day before release, but to find dozens of bugs day by day. So check out the top link in the description below to check out PVS Studios now. And welcome back. So today it's all about objects and classes. Now I've never really touched this subject before, but I think it's about time. Uh, so I've constructed a little piece of software here and we're going to demonstrate it first. Now what it does is it creates a new object, uh, a customer. Now this is in, in case you want to make some sort of a bank software. This is very simple, very very simple. Uh, so what it takes is a, a money amount, a savings amount, a social security number and a name. Now this software again is very simple. Uh, in future we'll probably make something a bit more uh, complicated and, uh, and and requiring um, of you, but first off, we're going to start off light. So uh, this is a custom class. We're going to look at it in a minute. Uh, it's called customer, <clears throat> and again, it takes these three variables. And then what we do is we write out the to string method on this specific object. Now, what is an object? Uh, an object in a object oriented programming language, uh, such as uh, C sharp, also Java. Uh, many others, you would think of an object like a thing. Uh, and so you could say that a table could be an object and you would have a depth, a height, maybe a width, yeah, a material, color, that sort of thing. Uh, the read line here is just to stop the thing from running any further. Now a class on the other hand is more like your overall picture of a thing, right? So you would have your variables in a class, you would have your methods, your setters and getters, uh, these are all for encapsulation, which we're going to discuss a bit about. Um, now, these are all just the general picture of what the thing is. And so for a person in a bank scenario, it would be about the savings. So you'd set your variables to a private, uh, meaning that only uh, they can only be referred to inside of uh, the class itself or in, in the case of uh, the object, then you'd call methods to return the values of uh, your variables, uh, your variables, sorry. And uh, you do this by, first of all, setting them private, and then in your constructor, uh, you would initialize them by giving them an actual value. So a constructor is like a method you call. Uh, you'd call this uh, when creating a new object. So as an example with our customer, you'd say customer, referring to the class, give it a name, say it's a new customer and that way you create a new object of the type customer in this case with the name Adam and so we pass the three variables and this uh, calls the constructor method which is this and so that has to be public because it has to be accessible outside of the class now it takes an amount a social security number and a name it's important that you uh, do declare uh, what type of, uh, of variable this is. In this case, it's an integer, an integer and a string. And so it says this referring to uh, the class's own variable. So in this case, this savings is the amount. Uh, this social security number in case of Adam would be his social security number given by the uh, call to the constructor method. And also the same for his name. Now we close that with the uh, typical uh, clamps here and then when we want to return a value so uh, you know earlier I mentioned encapsulation well this is a prime thing for object oriented uh, software development you'd use encapsulation to make sure that you cannot change the values of variables inside of an object outside of the object this keeps it under control and make sure that you don't have to go through your method or your 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 software to find out where that specific variable is changed in value uh, because you only call uh, the setters uh, to do that and you call the getters to return the values. And so that simplifies the, uh, the whole changing process. Um, yeah, so you would have your public, uh, meaning again it would be uh, accessible outside of the object, 
and uh, your getters they would have to be. Now also your setters, also public, they have to be accessible outside of the object. Now a getter is pretty simple. We declare a, uh, a, a uh, an access modifier, <laughs> sorry, yeah, and a return type. Now the return type is specific to what type of variable will this method return. So in this case, it's a string because it's a get name method and no parentheses because it's not going to take any parameters, right? And so you just say return and this owner name. Now what that does in case of Adam, we can go, oh, sorry, it's still running, yeah. So we can go down here and we can say Adam dot uh, get name and then you use the parentheses to mark that it's a method call. And so what we do is we'll print that out uh, just for you to see that the we can do this because it returns a string value. And the right line knows that. And so it allows us to call the method inside of the right line. And so you see it, it prints out Adam Savage, which is uh, his name. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll comment that out for now. Okay, so back to the getters. Now they return the, the private values of the object and we have three of those, three variables, three getter methods, no generalization of them. You, you don't typically have a getter method that will return all the values. That wouldn't be a getter method per se. That would be more like an, uh, an override for the two string, which we're also going to get to. Now your setter methods, again, you have an access modifier and then a return type. In this case, it's a void, meaning it's not going to return a specific thing uh, or a variable in that case. Um, so you'd have your ints in your strings and then you have your voids. You can also have booleans, you could have whatever. Uh, so the void doesn't return anything. And in this case, it's smart because you do the, you call the set name method. So you're going to change the private value of the object uh, in this case, Adam, change his name. So we can do this, right? Uh, so down here, oh, I should probably say a bit more about it. So what it does is it takes a parameter called name. It's a string and it says this owner name is the new name. So Adam's uh, name will be changed to the new name that we enter. So first off, we'll print out his name and then we'll call the method uh, set name and we'll set it to uh, uh, Phyllis D. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then we'll print out again the um, the get name. And so it should go Adam Savage and then Phyllis D. And now the to string method says Phyllis D because we changed the name of the object. So we're going to comment this out again. Um, and leave it in just for now. So that's what a setter does. It allows you to change the variable, uh, the private variable of an object without actually having to touch that variable. And so it, it protects every variable, uh, variable inside of the object. This is very important when you're talking about object-oriented uh, programming and it's one of the pillars of it. So again, we have these uh, three uh, setters. You can set the social security number, although that could be argued that that should even be in here. Uh, because really you wouldn't change this once it's created. That is quite unique to just you. That's the whole point. <laughs> and so you wouldn't change it. Uh, you would maybe set the savings if you're depositing some money and you don't have anything in there to begin with. You could also make a new, um, a new uh, method here. We'll just call it public void add money, right? And so you'd take an, an integer, an amount, and you would add that to the pile of money that you already have in your bank. And so we'll say this uh, savings plus equals the amount, right? And so this will just add a certain amount of money to your savings account. And we can do it again if we want to maybe say uh, remove money. So we'll call remove money, an integer amount, and we'll subtract that amount. So we can call down here, instead of the get name, we can say Adam dot, uh, and then we'll say add, add money. We're gonna add 200 into his savings, and then we're gonna print out. So we're just gonna copy and paste this and say, instead of get name, 
we're going to print get savings like that. Yep. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but uh, this time we're going to remove money. So let's say Adam dot remove money and we're going to remove 300 just so you can really tell the difference. Um, and oh, sorry, Adam and oh, no, we're not going to write that out. We're going to write actually. Yeah, let's just keep the get savings that I removed. I don't know why I removed that. So here we go. So we deposited uh, 200 to begin with. That was when we created the object, right? Then we added 200, we're 400, we removed 300, we're 100. And now uh, when we call the true string, it knows that the variable or the uh, value uh, of your savings is now 100 because it knows how to do basic maths. And so that's quite good, right? I think it's quite good. Now, uh, we'll just comment this out and we'll get to uh, the two string. Now a two string method is quite uh, generic. You would always have a two string on pretty much any object. Uh, that's the whole point. Um, or oh, that's p part of where it comes from. It always, everything's uh, inherited from the object class. And so you'd have your two string on the object and you can always call that. Uh, normally that would re return some either some gibberish or some string values. Uh, but you can also make your own two string. Uh, you can either overwrite it or you can just make a method, apparently. Uh, in Java, you would have to overwrite it. Uh, I'm coding Java at the moment, so I'd have to do the add overwrite, but uh, C Sharp allows me to just call a two string. Uh, and so I return the name and uh, add the owner name. This just, um, this basically uh, just adds it like this. So it says, it says name. And then the plus allows it to just go in there like this. So it says Adam Sauvage like this. That's basically what it does, yeah. Um, and so we add the name Adam Savage. We do a spacing or we do comma and then space savings dollar and then the savings amount and then social security and the social security number. Uh, all this is, is done and then called. So we'll remove this. And you'll see the basic method again. So we call a, a right line and we just say Adam dot two string and then it prints out this uh, It's the two string for Adam. Now we can obviously uh, just leave this blank if we wanted to. So like he has no name. Um, put it back. You can shorten this. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with a, uh, a constructor call like this. Uh, but one thing you cannot do is you cannot uh, call the uh, the constructor with more variables than it takes. So my constructor takes a, a savings amount, a social security number, and a name. Now we can't add uh, a mister, for example, if we wanted to do that, because that would not work. It doesn't take that. Now we could obviously do that, and let's do that. So what we would do is after the name would say uh, string and uh, gender, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, we do a private uh, string gender. Uh, set that to a basically an empty and say this gender equals gender. Now this will set the uh, private value of Adam to whatever we ends it. So now the constructor will give us an error because we are missing the uh, the Mr. or Mrs. And in this case, we're gonna add Mr. and a space. And so in the two string, we're gonna add, uh, after this, we're gonna add the, we should do a getter first, actually. So a public uh, string get gender. I know it's not called gender, but I, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> uh, return this and we'll turn the gender. And so we'd call this down here. So we'd say name and then get gender method call. And there you go. So now it should say Mr. Adam Savage. Let's check. Yeah, Mr. Adam Savage savings, all that. So this is a basic tutorial of uh, methods 
of classes and a little bit about objects. Uh, now leave in your comments if you have anything you want me to discuss or any project that you're working on and need some help on, maybe an idea or two. Uh, either way, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful uh, and I hope you can integrate this in your own projects. Uh, I know I'm going to do a lot more. I'm planning to move a bit into Java as that's what I'm working on at the moment at uni. So I thank you all for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.